Well, hello, everyone. Yes, welcome to the DYF Network. We call Network Nation, and I'm excited every week, as everyone knows, to the guests we bring on the show. But today I bring you a guest that is a former baseball player at Hofstra University. Growing up, he was a multi-sport athlete, however, excelled best in baseball. After graduating from St. John's College High School, where he was a three-time state league champion and a team captain, he attended Hofstra University. At Hofstra, he played multiple positions while earning the honor of team captain. He recently graduated with a bachelor degree in public relations and is the current host of a podcast called Student Athlete Combo, where he imparts tips and advice to high school and current student athletes. Let's give a warm Network Nation welcome to our guest today, Miles Mensa. Miles, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. We're excited too, and I'm excited, like I was just telling you before we got on. Everyone, this is this is our second with our podcast. You can see this in video, a face with a name I always say now. So welcome to our second ever show that's also going to be aired as on video too on YouTube. Thank you. Wow. Well, let's do this. I really want to go back with you. I always start with all our guests with a backstory. Where did it all start? What did you like to do growing up for fun? So growing up for fun, um, similar to probably the other kids on the, in the streets, um, me and my friends, we play, you know, pick up basketball, pick up baseball, pick up football, the game jackpot or 500 where you're throwing up the football or the tennis ball and you got to, you know, jump up and grab it for points, um, stuff like that, you know, riding bikes. I was always big into sports because um, my parents were athletes. You know, my, my family was a big athletic family. So growing up watching sports, basketball, baseball, football, tennis, um, anything. And I loved it. And I started playing soccer when I was younger, as I assume a lot of kids do. And then I got into baseball, got into basketball, football, and then it all just, you know, uh, excelled from there. When did the love for baseball come into place? Because we know we're going to get into that about – student athlete playing college as a collegiate baseball player when did it start was it high school was it younger than that when you said you know what I really love this sport was it more kind of give us kind of that journey there okay so I would say that it started when I was 10 or 11 okay. um to tell you the truth I was just I was one of those kids who were who developed faster than everybody so I was bigger I was stronger than everyone and I was I was like a, a phenom uh, baseball came easiest to me when I was little. I loved basketball. I loved playing basketball too and football, but football stopped a little early. Uh, I'm embarrassed saying it, but I was afraid to get hit. I didn't like getting hit, so I stopped playing. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was, I was baseball, basketball, but when I was 10 or 11, I, I stopped playing Little League and then I started playing travel baseball got, and got into that. And it gets really competitive at a young age and I fell in love with it and just ran with it into high school. And then, um, I found out, or oh, I realized, you know, fresh early freshman, sophomore year, I wanted to be a collegiate baseball player. I wanted to be a professional baseball player, obviously, but right. I really like honed in on wanting to play collegiate baseball when I was 14, 15 years old. How did, would you attribute any of the multiple sports that you played? I know you were talking about different things, and I listened to a soccer too that's teaching coordination there, eye hand coordination with some of those other things, playing those multiple sports. I always ask people that. Do you see that were attributed to also to baseball? Oh, absolutely. Um, and all the sports, there are certain there are movements that obviously the sports are different, but mm -hmm. you find similarities in the way that your body moves. Mm -hmm. And um honestly, just like the the athletic in instincts that you have when you're playing different sports. So, you know, um baseball, I found that baseball really helped me in, in playing some football and helped me playing some basketball and vice versa. Basketball and football helped me playing baseball, the way that my body moved, you know, throwing and cutting and, and getting in, in certain athletic positions and everything like that. It definitely, uh, they definitely connect. Right, right. And with you too, this is where I really want to go is that let, let's look at where you are now. You're a current college graduate. Congratulations there. Thank you. And already with your maturity, you have your own podcast. So kind of tell us a little bit about that. And we're going to get more into some of the high school things and some of the collegiate things that can help out our guests as well. Of course. So, yeah, uh, I just graduated this past May. So I'm a very recent graduate. And I, after I graduated, well, during um, the quarantine, you know, from March, April, a little bit of May, I really wanted to start a podcast. I love podcasts. I've been listening to DYA for a while. And Thank I was you. like, I want to make a podcast. I, I want to um, help student athletes a lot with the academic side because when you're in college, um, it's not easy. Um, you have to have a routine. You have to have time management skills. You have to do a lot of things right for, for it to work 
um, well and for you to be comfortable with it. And I, I struggled a little bit with it in the beginning. And obviously, I figured it out along the way. But I wanted to make a podcast to help either kids uh, in high school who want to play college and they want to play sports in college or kids who are in college right now playing whatever sport they are to, um, you know, help them if they're a freshman, if they're a sophomore and they're struggling a little bit, give them some tips and have interviews with other student athletes, former student athletes, current student athletes, um, pro athletes who were in college. And I just really wanted to help, like give back to student athletes uh, or aspiring student athletes with the academic side, but also just help with their overall college experience. And you know, I did listen to some of your episodes. You're doing a great job. Everyone, subscribe. It is. It Miles has a great show there. And we're going to get into a little bit of that right now because this is what I'm going to ask you right off the bat, as young as you are, any mentors through high school and college? Um, besides my parents, mm-hmm. I, I would like to say that my in high school, I had a very good, a, a very good baseball coaching staff that helped me out with a lot of discipline. Um, time management and just how to do things the right way on and off the field and yeah. I think that's I think that's important because um, you would know everyone knows but sports teach you so many lessons from a young mm-hmm. age growing up and I think that like you know every child should play sports some sometime in their life because the lessons that they learn in terms of teamwork and communication and discipline all those things they they, they stick with you for life um, go ahead. Ahead. no no go ahead and college um, I, I had some I had some mentors. I had honestly all of my mentors being an athlete my whole life came from coaches and 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 my parents and even even teammates. Teammates that I looked up to in high school that were, you know, a couple years older than me that were successful. I really wanted to, you know, follow their footsteps because I saw they were um really competitive at, at high levels and uh I would I would kind of lean towards doing what they want to do and, and following their footsteps because I see how successful they are and how they carry themselves. So I did have peer mentors that I really appreciate. And I always tell them, but it is important to them. Really a coach, that's what you got. I always say you got to lead by example as a coach because you don't know the impact that you can have on someone. And just like your show, you might never hear from someone and you might hear from someone, but we don't know what impact we're having. We just keep leading the way we do or attempt to do what we're doing. And you're doing an awesome job. I want to start with you with high school, though. When you start looking hindsight on things that you learn from both perspectives, let, let me start with this because I've dealt with some baseball organizations and I had, like I was telling you before coming on, one of my friends is a, 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 was a pro scout, but he still is a college scout. And when I look at some of the younger athletes in high school, what can you give me, especially when we talk about physicality as far as conditioning, strength, did you know a difference going to college versus high school? And the reason I ask this too is that I've had some Olympic athletes on that once they went to college, what they done in high school, some of them were behind the curve, the learning curve, because it's like, wait a minute, we didn't even have this in high school. And I've even talked to some other scouts to say, you know, the mobility, the flexibility, the core stability, how important it is. And they don't learn those things until sometimes in some programs until they get to college. Absolutely. You know, um, and I was, I would think that in the high school that I went to, they did a good job with their, with their strength training of um, their baseball athletes and everything. But something with the sport of baseball that people don't know is, um, I think it's every sport, but mm-hmm. they, they expect you to be strong physically, like your, your whole body, they want you to put up a lot of weight in the weight room. But me being a baseball player, what I personally know is, like you said, mobility, flexibility, core strength, is almost more important than how much you can bench press or how much you can squat. Yeah. Because the movements, the movements that you do on the field uh, involve flexibility, mobility, and core strength. And just because you can bench press, I don't know, like 250, that doesn't mean you can hit a home run. That doesn't mean, you know, you, your range in, in, uh, on defense is great. You need to be able to have certain movements and do it correctly, do it fluidly, and do it quickly. And that's where flexibility, mobility, and core strength comes in. And a lot of ba- – I don't – there are obviously a lot of strength trainers all over the country in different, um, you know, different gyms and everything like that. And I know that there are some good ones. I also know that there's some bad ones because I've been to those. Right. Right. Um, And I think that now strength training is a lot better than it was say five years ago, because there are even more than that, like seven years ago, 10 years ago, because there is kind of like a revolution of, of, um, the education of, of strength training and, and how to develop certain athletes according to their sport. 
when I feel like when I was in high school, which was 2012 to 2016, uh, it was just getting there. But now the stuff that I even see on social media and TV and is, is a lot different than it was, you know, four or five years ago. Um, but with that being said, I think that a young athlete, when they're, when they're, when they're training, when they're getting trained by the strength coach or anything with every sport, mobility, flexibility, and core strength, um, and strength all over your body, like little muscle strength is so much more important than you would expect. And that's how people get hurt too, when they don't have the right core stability or, you know, scapular muscle stability and they hurt their shoulders, they do, you know, so it's, it's a lot more complex than people think. You, you don't just need to be able to squat 500 pounds or, or bench, you know what I'm saying? So you're, you're right. And you hit it on the head too, is, is what we, I call it, you're on it is movement efficiency. And when I look at in my era, it was the old pumping iron, gym sagittal plane movement, no matter what sports you play, it's come a long way. And the reason I ask you that, is because it can get a testimony from someone closer to their age than you, is that sometimes you see athletes and they think, well, we need to do this. But when you start to get up the tier system, even to the pros, I always say now they have physical therapists that are in the athletic training in because they're looking at movement prior to injury so that they can be more proactive with it. And we're seeing that more now that we need to, I'm a real advocate on educating down the pipeline with it, is that the younger we can start, the better we are. And the coaches, we got to get ourselves to understand some degree of movement when we're working with athletes, because if we see a, just like a parent and see if their child gait is off, it's like, wait, my son or daughter, they're, they're, you know, something's wrong. You know it with your kids. And as coaches, we, even if you have a large group, you can kind of look at them during dynamic warmups to find out, well, coach, this is a little bit different than that or pain and understanding what pain is and, and really building a collaborative effort within your organization. So I, I definitely wanted you to touch base on that, but I want to go on the academic end with you. When you look hindsight on our show, we had a guest. Her name was Angela Lewis. She's a former professional basketball player, pro coach too. And she coached St. Louis university. I think it was, but she had the, the phases of recruiting coming out of high school and one thing she talked about first was assessment. There's some different stages. She had assessments. She dealt with planning, data collection, evaluations, and make a decision. And one thing I wanted to go over with you is that when you were young, did you have a lot of kids don't even realize it? Were you organized? Were you ready? Were you ready for the ACTSAT? Were you ready as far as looking at schools that you were considering going to? Where were you at when you were younger? Okay, so... I'm gonna be 100% honest here. Yeah, I was an organized kid. Um, I got good grades in high school. I was not ready for the ACT and the SAT. I didn't like standardized tests. I thought they were hard, and I didn't like um, sitting through, you know, three hours of of a test and reading. Uh, I regret that 100% because I I had the grades to. Uh, um, initially, I wanted to play at an Ivy League school because uh, I had the grades, and I was talking to schools they told me that I need I needed to get my ACT and my, or my SAT to a certain point and then I could you know get a, get an an offer they don't give academic money at some at some schools but right I mean athletic excuse me um but I could get academic money I didn't get the test scores I needed to get into those Ivy Leagues and I ended up having to go to you know look at other schools so no I was not ready for the ACT or the SAT I wish I had studied and um prepared a lot more for those standardized tests because you know, they could, they can make or break like what school you want. If you have a dream school and it's say you want to go to Stanford, you have to have good grades all through high school to get into Stanford and your standardized test scores have to be good. Um, so you can't take it lightly from, you know, from sophomore year on, like you should prepare and you should have goals and, and a plan of how you're going to attack getting into college academically as, as well as athletically. And you, you know, one good point you made there too is that, you know, the grades, but the, the early start of that is and another thing. We're going to jump into college and kind of blend in what you're doing here. Because on one episode I was listening to you on, uh, I definitely want to touch base as far as the library. I don't know if you remember episode you done on the library. I used to live in the library. I still do to this day. A lot of people like, even when I was in school, they kind of frowned on it. It's like, what are you doing in the library? I'm like, it's, it's no better place to be. It's peaceful. You can focus and tutorial assistance too. Let's talk about that at the college level. But at the younger level, it, it, it is. What, what, what you're saying there, Miles, is so important. Everyone start early. I made a mistake when I was in school because I was highly recruited in football. And the mistake I made is I was like you. I didn't like tests. I didn't like standardized tests. And in my era, 
They were just starting the SAT, ACT. And for me, I always got test anxiety. The GPA was there, but I didn't prepare for it. And I bombed the first one. I literally bombed it. And it wasn't because I didn't have the ability to do it. It's just I overanalyze things sometimes. And so I highly recommend you start a process early. And if you need tutors, get tutors. And I want to transition into college with you. I was listening to that one podcast. In the beginning, it was, you got, you, I'll let you tell us the story a little bit more. Did you use those? And I say, take advantage of them, everybody out there. Did you use the tutors in the beginning stages? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> my, my freshman year, to, like, I, I had trouble because um, in high school, your teachers are very hands-on. If, if you need help, they're going to help you in class. In college, depending on the school that you go to, you could be in a lecture hall with 200 kids. They don't have time. The professors don't have time to help every single kid. But there is, especially as a student athlete, there are access. There's so much access to help. You can get tutors, you know, in the athlete academic center. I use the math tutor my whole semester um, because my math teacher wasn't a great teacher. He was very smart, but he wasn't a great teacher. So I would go to my math tutor after dinner, like 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and they would help me out every single day to get ready for tests, study for tests, get my homework done, everything. And if I didn't go to the tutor, I wouldn't have passed the class. Um, I took a science class, it was astronomy class, and it was kind of like the same thing. It was very hard and I utilized the tutor too, studying for tests, making study guides, everything. It's so important and it's so helpful. And I think it, everything's free. So if you, if you have that option and you, and you need help, 100% you use those options. Now, let's look at this, too, is that I always tell everyone this, when they look at going to college, and, and can they do this in high school? Because I deal with some of the social media, tick plop, TikTok, whatever is out there now, the name of it, right, and Instagram and all that. But in college, building that network, how important is that? And everyone thinks that, you know, let's talk, one end we talk going pro. Small percentage make it a pro. I think this is the boat a lot of young athletes are missing. Student athletes is that while you're at the university level, you should be building relationships within this college, but also with corporations all because some you're living behind a name that is a brand in that school. So it gives you access to things. Kind of walk us through that because I was listening to when you were talking about you actually done some work at the pro level, didn't you? With did you do any work with pro organizations? So uh, this summer. I was supposed to be working with the Washington Nationals. Okay. Um, the baseball team. The coronavirus um, m m messed a lot of things up. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, my, yes, uh, I was supposed to be working in Major League Baseball this summer. It would have been my first job. Um, but there are a lot of connections, and I wouldn't. So the connections that I made in college helped me out with the position that I had gotten for this for this coming for this summer um i'll give you another example so if you play baseball or if you play any sport at a college there are a ton of alumni who played before you and they could be they could be 10 years past and they have a business they have a corporation they have all these things and they're still giving money back to the schools they're still keeping up with the program because you know they have their friends are there they have the same coach and you know they they love the school they love the sport you, if you keep in touch with the connections that you have through your sport or through your school, you can get a job. And this is looking down the road, but it can set you up for it can set you up for a career. It can set you up with connections that can advance your career, start your career. Um, you know, you could partner up with somebody who went to the school and and have your own company or have your own startup or something like that. Making connections outside of just playing sports, but just for life, is so important. And I think that's a benefit that student athletes don't really see until maybe they get out of school or right when they're finished school, but mm -hmm. it's a network and it's a family. It's a, it's a community of people that everyone's trying to advance and everyone wants to help each other in the same school. And you can really benefit from making those connections and being a part of that family. And, and I wish now, of course, a thousand years ago when I played is that when I was in college, we didn't have this. And now, you can build that brand relationship with your network through social media. What would you tell some of the high school athletes that, but you see a lot of profiles regarding sports, but who they connect with through, through connecting with who they'll like or connect with through, let it be Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is. 
what would you recommend a high school athlete? Because they're not in college yet. They're saying, well, how can I start something now? What would I, what can I do? Well, my first, my first tip would be your idols, the people that you like to see on TV or you like in your sport, follow them. Um, even, even college players, if you're following a college, say you like University of Florida and you're a softball player and, and you like the third baseman, they're, they probably have a big platform on social media because they play at a national level. Follow them. Follow kids who are, if you have kids around you who are like the same age of you, follow them. And, you know, you can talk. If you have an idea, you can talk to them. Even if, you know, you're a high school kid and you want to reach out to someone in college, send them, you can send them a message on social media, on Instagram. Their account is probably um, open and you can send them a message. Be like, listen, I, I love watching you play. I want to play like you one day. I was thinking about this. Would you be like, what do you think about this? Are you interested in it? Um, even in even in high school, you can do that. And another another thing is when you're looking at schools, feel free to reach out to current players because they can tell you exactly what they know about the school because they're in that situation right now. They're on the team that you might want to play for in a year or two. They can tell you about the coaching. They can tell you about the school. They can tell you about the classes, the lifestyle, everything. So I would say that social media is great right now because you can really reach out to anybody Um from any age and at any school and really get the information that you need or um, maybe find out some information that you didn't even know that was out there. Now, what about a, a young kid going, a young athlete, junior high going to high school, they're starting to see that path like you are, they're, they're loving the sport of baseball or whatever the sport is, what, would you, what, would, what advice would you give them? What, what should they do? I think if, if we're talking about social media, absolutely, if you're a seventh, or eighth grader and you have social media and maybe there's a really good player a junior or senior at your at your local high school send them a message on social media be like hey i love seeing you play i saw you in the paper you're a great player i love to work out with you someday or how do you work out or like what is your routine i want to be like you someday they everyone loves fans everyone loves people talking about them they're going to respond to you and be like oh yeah this is what i do or you know come out to this gym one time we could well maybe not now because coronavirus Right. But um, people love having fans. So you reach out to them and say, listen, I love watching you play. Uh, what do you, what's your workout plan like? How do you, how do you train? How do you lift weights? They're going to they're gonna help you out. Now, if the current you, I, I do this with myself sometimes, I used to, is I would, if you could go back in time and talk to the younger you in high school, what would you tell yourself? If you could change anything, and what would it be? What would I, I would definitely tell myself to be in the past, to be a little more humble. Mm. Um, yeah, because at the end of the day, when you get to college, even when you get into high school, all sports are very competitive. Um, work as hard as you can. I think that if, if I was to go back and be a junior or senior in high school, I would work a little bit harder. Um, because I, when I got to school, I realized that when you get to a school and college, it doesn't matter what division you're in, everybody is talented. They are there for a reason. Um, so I would have worked a little bit harder and been a little bit more humble. And I'm going to ask you this. What is your why for what you're doing right now with the podcast? My why, why is because when I first got into school, I was having – I was having trouble with both sides of me being there with school and with um, athletics. And I had an injury, which, which kind of made it a little bit more tough for me. But the reason why is because I had, I had trouble when I was a freshman, even a sophomore. And I want to help kids who are getting into school or even, you know, the freshman or sophomore year, I want to make it be a little bit easy on them with the information that they get and just the stories and, uh, experience that they can listen to from former student athletes. Well, wow, you're doing a great thing right now, especially as young as you are being a visionary. Follow your dreams, you love and your passion. And we're at that part of the show I call Motivational Moment. Now, this is like the NFL's two minute warning. Now, I want you to imagine, Miles, you've been invited to a youth sports banquet. If you could give one piece of advice to the parents, audience, or coaches, the entire everyone, what would that be? I want you to imagine you're standing up on stage, the crowd's just cheered, and you're on stage ready to present. Congratulations and good luck. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is follow your dreams. If you're 13 years old, if you're 15 years old, and you want to be a pro athlete, 
believe in yourself, have the most confidence in the world. And that doesn't mean be cocky, but have the most confidence in the world that you're the best player at, at that sport that you could be. You're the best player. Secondly, take initiative. If you want to play in college, you know, you have to work hard. It's not going to be given to you. And two, reach out to those schools. Be very good in your academics because that's going to play a big part with whatever sport you're playing. Take initiatives and be productive. Be productive. Work hard in the classroom and on the field, on the court. That's a great motivational moment there. How can our audience reach you and what media platforms can they connect with you on? Right. So I have an Instagram. It's student athlete underscore combo. And there I'll have posts of my um, past episodes. And then I'm going to post new episodes, obviously, you know, some sneak peeks. And then I have underscore S A combo underscore on Twitter. It's a student athlete combo Twitter. I just loaded it up. So I'm going to be posting new episodes, retweeting some information from other athletes and everything. And then you can go to student athlete combo on all listening platforms, Spotify, Apple podcast, and all of my episodes are up there. Um, yeah, that's, that's where all my listening goes and that's where all my posts are. So I appreciate if you guys, if you, if you're interested, give it a listen and thank you, Mr. Edwards for, for bringing me on the podcast today. I had a lot of fun and there was definitely some good information going out in this episode today. It, great. You've done a great job today and everyone go subscribe, check out everything that Miles is doing, keep up the awesome work and we'll have everything on the dynetwork.org too, as well as our media platforms. Keep up the great work and we're going to keep in touch for sure. Thanks for coming to the show today, Miles. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.